Hi, my name is Ishio Kadali and uh, from New York, and it's my pleasure to be uh, co-moderate this session with Dr. Samir Kapadia on valve intervention and heart failure. We have an excellent panel of discussants with us today, Dr. Kang, Dr. Sung, Dr. Kim, Dr. Tan, Dr. Kubo, and Dr. Lee. Uh, we hope to make this session interactive. Uh, it will include a live case as well as several lectures. So without wasting any more time, I, we will go out to Dr. Seibel Carr, uh, and his team and uh, Los Robles uh, Medical Center who will be performing a mitre clip. Uh, Saibo, can you hear us? I can hear you very well. Can you hear me? Yes, wonderfully. It's, it's nice to hear oh, and see you again. How are you doing? Oh, thanks. <laughs> good, very good. Are you in Is New York? Is that Greg next to you? I'm, I, I'm actually, yes. Uh, yes, yes, Greg next to you, I see. Uh, old friends. Uh, is Samir there too? Samir's hey, there. Yeah. I'm here. Oh, hi, Samir, how are you? Nice I'm great, you I'm great. Looking forward to... Yes, uh, this is Greg on side. You can see Greg here on the right side, left side. I see him, yeah, those, my uh, goodness. Those are my friends in Korea. Uh, Anyong Haseo. Uh, <laughs> and so we can see over here uh, on the left side, Dr. Fontana. I want you to introduce you to Dr. Andrew Gabriel. He's the cardiac anesthesiologist and echocardiographer. Hi, everybody. He's outstanding, actually. Uh, on, on the right side is Colleen. Colleen is actually one of the texts. When we get upset, we call her Susie. So when I'm saying calling her Susie, it means I'm getting upset with her. <laughs> okay. Just Gabe Oreda. On my right is Ryan. He's actually a first year intern. This is his third day in the cat lab. He just did a tavern in the morning and now he's in the mitre clip. And then over here, you have Shirag. Shirag, it's, he's actually the person who referred the patient to me. You about uh, Ali. Ali and Piro say hi. Ali and Piro from, from Abbott. So... Without any delay, I'm going to start by presenting the case. Chirag, do you want to present the patient? My name is Chirag Desai. Members of the uh, panel, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. And I know my fellow Kubo's on the panel, right? Yes, yes, yes he is. Uh, I, yeah, we have an excellent panel. I think uh, we introduced just a few minutes ago. And but, I'm, uh, uh, yeah. If you give up. Yes. <clears throat> yes good morning. Chirag. My name is uh, Dr. Desai, uh, and uh, it's my pleasure to present this case to you today. Um, our patient is an 86-year-old gentleman who uh, was told for many years that he had a heart murmur and was just treated medically, lives in a remote area in California, presented to us uh, uh, early last year with uh, progressive heart failure symptoms and uh, had a non-STEMI and we stented his LAD, um, but he was also found to have uh, LV dysfunction and uh, severe mitral, uh, eccentric mitral regurgitation. So uh, we have been treating him medically. He's had no heart failure symptoms for the last four months, but has had progressive symptoms and can barely walk across the room without severe shortness of breath. So class three symptoms. He's a very frail elderly, uh, elderly male. He has, also has a, has a history of hypertension, spinal stenosis, COPD. And um, on uh, his overall evaluation, his STS score was estimated at 6% for mitral valve repair, 6.63 for replacement. So high risk. His EF is 40% and there is a severe mitral regurgitation. Here you can see his transthoracic images. You can show the LV dysfunction. You see the anterior wall is akinetic. See that? Mm -hmm. And he's got an eccentric jet. And then the next picture. And you can see the flitches. So instead of showing those images, I'd rather go straight live to T. Andrew, do you want to show the oh, images? Okay. Yep, sure. So, so we got, actually, we didn't have any images uh, done here. These are the first set of images that are done here. And we're going to show you some of the images. You see the case? So he's extremely frail. You know, he's got multiple comorbidities. He's got COPD. His STS is six. And do you see the images now? Yes, yes we can see him. We can see him well. Yeah, right. So you can see over here, um, Andrew, do you want to make some yeah. comments on your sure. views? Yeah, so I'm ju just showing you guys the LV first, just to show that under anesthesia is EFs even lower probably today, probably about 30% there. And then uh, let me so get sure you to the, the, my, the, the mitral. Yeah, I'll show you a mitral valve now. So here you go. Here's go straight to the pathology here. You see posterior leaflet flail probably on the medial side of, uh, of P2. And in addition, because of his LV dysfunction, you see anterior leaflet restriction there. And I'm just kind of moving the X-plane just to show some normal part of, uh, of the valve. And then, sorry, there's a little skip there. This actually just showed uh, the, our transeptal height we've already crossed. And we're about four and a half centimeters right where we want to be uh, 
from the mitral valve. You want to show the 3D Here. of the valve? I will show, yep. And then uh, this is just zero degrees. As you advance the probe, you kind of move more medially. And, and there's, there's the Pisa jet right there. Here's a 3D jet or 3D shot right here. And you can see the posterior flail right where my pointer is there. And then there's the color with the wall filter turned up. And when you freeze it and crop down, you can see where the uh, Pisa jet is right there. In comparison, there's the, the flail and then there's the, there's the jet. And then, you know, we'll use MPR during the case, but this shows how you can cut it perfectly and, and show the pathology and also still have uh, your grasping view and uh, your BICOM in the top left corner there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, uh, Sushil, by the way, I may skip my lecture to just for the case to go, if I could go longest, I'm going to do everything. I just did the transeptal, which is 4.2, but I just want to show you the position of the transeptal. And I'm going to show you what I do normally. So I put two wires in the pulmonary vein. Any any uh, suggestions or comments from the case about the case from the panel? About so yeah, uh, uh, yeah, go ahead, Samir. No, I I think it's a great case. The two things are kind of important. That uh, one is that it is slightly on the medial side. You know the flail, mm -hmm. so you know you want a little bit of a height for transeptal puncture uh, yes. because you know when you want to and it is also flailing, so you want to have a higher uh, transeptal as high as possible, so you have enough height. And the second is that the anterior leaflet is so restricted that you may create some mitral stenosis. So this is not a trivial matter to keep in mind. So what kind of clip you select uh, is also an important uh, consideration. So these are the two things that I wanted Seibel to say that what he thought about these two, two issues. Uh, on that last comment, uh, do you so also I mean, have a baseline really mitral like, valve area? Uh, no. Sorry. Yes, we did. Well, we did it by uh, we did it by MPR. There it is, right there. And there's the MPR. Can you see it? I say, yep, seven point four. Yeah, we got seven point four with a gradient of two on a on. Yeah. A but I think the area I think the area is large enough, and the but you know uh, I like the what Samir pointed out that the anterior leaf is restricted and the posterior is flail, which is actually going to be a challenging to grasp. And number two. Um, I mean, you know, the, the, I'm more concerned about the grasping than even the stenosis. You agree with that, Samir? Yeah, I do. And I think that the larger the XT clip is sometimes a problem with this. I had an issue with one of these very restricted anterior leaflet because when you when you grasp it, and you, because you want to grasp the, uh, the P2 at a higher level, you have to pull the clip yeah. up. And yeah. so then you kind of uh, put a lot of tension on the anterior leaflet. So it can tear. So these are these are important uh, considerations to keep so in we, mind. We prepare an XT and um, XTW. So maybe we should go with NTW. I'll, I'll take one so, try. So can, we ask the, can we ask the panel with any thoughts on sure, XT sure. versus NT? Because I think that's a great point. I would, I would use an NTW because of the concerns that Samir raised uh, because of the stress on that anterior leaflet and that it might tear. But I, I don't know that there's a right answer. Any other Thoughts from the panelists? Uh, by the way, before you I pass the panelists, that, uh, I just want to show you. XTW is. Put... Uh... Sorry, go ahead. Yes. I, I think an XTW would be a reasonable choice here. I don't think you want to really grasp too much here. You probably want to really be able to actuate with just one clip. So uh, actually, I'm quite comfortable in trying with uh, XTW here rather than NT. Um, and I, I'm one. The nature of the valve looks a bit fragile for 86 years old, not unexpected. So I'll be very concerned about selective grasping and then potentially a, a tear actually uh, in this uh, uh, very thin of uh, leaflets. So, uh, but Cybo will definitely make it look easy later on, I'm sure. So let's see. No. Uh, so, uh, you know what? Did I show you that how I have put two wires in the, can you see fluoro? I put two wires in the pulmonary vein. Did you see that? Yes. Yeah. And over one wire, I put a pigtail catheter. And over the other wire, I'm going to put the guide catheter. So the transeptal sheath, I advanced in the pulmonary vein, then put two wires there. Over one wire, we have the pigtail catheter. And now over the second wire, I'm going to advance the guide. So I usually like to monitor left atrial pressure con continuously through the case. Can somebody show the left atrial pressure, please? 
So, Saibal, you don't like the uh, transduce just the sheath because most commonly it could. No, 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 because the guide when it bends, uh, when I you know. have a lot of flexion, you it gets dampened. So, you don't get a real pressure. Can you show the real? Yes. So, yeah, nice. so I don't like it, Samir. Okay. Um, my puncture height is a bit, is, is only 4.3, but I may be having a bit of a problem, but let's see what I can do about it. Okay? Yeah, yeah. So no, I'm not I, going to advance I, the gut, right? Yeah, no, I agree, yeah. I so usually... I, uh, this is one of the things that I want to say in my lecture. And you know, I'm saying it now, I, I truly believe that one should do left atrial pressure monitoring during the entire case. No, I, I agree. Like real I agree. Especially functional MR or borderline mitral valve areas. I think it's helpful. Okay. I usually use the Tore wire, so I don't have to go to pulmonary veins. And what uh, do you do the the Tore wire is too expensive. We, we can't afford it. That's, that's expensive for us. <laughs> England Clinic is a rich hospital. They can afford it. Crossing. This is $35 only. <laughs> All right, so we're so trying you to have Greg, to... so Greg next to you. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not just passed through so, on this one. Yeah. So, Simon, uh, let me, or Greg, let me ask you a question. You know, when we send a patient for surgery and they're younger, yes. we, we have, we, we discussed the likelihood of repair. You know, I yes. think, you know, one of the things that over the last 10 years, you've done thousands of these cases at this point. What, what do you sort of think about what is the likelihood of a good result and what is your expectation going in? I think. You know, all these cases, you know, part of it is, what is your expectation? What are your goals? What are you trying to get to? This guy has an EF of 30%. Well, what are in your... this goal, with the 88-year-old man, is a different story. You know, I, even if I go to moderate MR, um, I'm going to be happy. But I, I okay. can go to Trace. If he was younger, he was more healthier, I would have, my goal is to be Trace MR. And I think okay. the new data suggests, I think you agree with you, that we can get, we can achieve that. No, don't, Craig, don't do too much. So. No, not really. Uh, I'm putting on the data. We don't need to go. The the expand data suggests that over 85% of the time you can go one plus MR or less in in appropriately selected patients. So I think with the advent of G4, uh, we definitely have improved our our results compared to before. We also do know that in the mitral clip, that once you repair it successfully, it lasts for six months there's evidence of durability beyond that. Right. Especially, right. especially even in functional MR patients. So... Greg, can I ask you a question? Uh, yes. If, if, you, if you were to take this patient to surgery, um, they're younger, EF is a little better, what would the surgical technique here be? Your... Greg, do you want to make a comment? Yeah, no, I think it's... This is, these are really challenging cases, uh, potentially because of what you're seeing with the restriction with the anterior leaflet. Yeah. And um, I think this would be a, a repair that, at least initially... Just a second. The strategy would be to, to address the prolapse. Uh, we like to do as much um, uh, respecting the leaflet as possible. So I think these days most surgeons would at least first consider putting cords in there to, to deal with the prolapse unless there was some reason otherwise. And uh, then this, this case in such a limited area, it might actually have a sort of a B-plasty, B, B as in Victor. Plasty, um, but the only way to really uh, give yourself more coaptation with the anterior leaflet would then be to probably do some sort of a undersizing uh, annual plasty uh, on top of that. So you'd have to address the prolapse and also uh, reduce the annular size uh, with probably a, just a slightly not a severely undersized uh, annual annual plasty ring. So you can see my guide catheter is in, and uh, can you decrease the flush? And you can see I only have a centimeter of guide inside. You see that? Because I'm on the medial side. So I'm advancing the guide out. Can you floor? Mm -hmm. Clips through. The clip is right through. We are on sandwiched. And I'm just going to bring it down. Saibo, have you ever had a, the clip interact with your pigtail? Or get caught? Uh, no, uh, not a problem. Yeah. Clockwise, you guide. Mm -hmm. No, that, that, actually, that doesn't happen. I don't know why, but it... It usually is not an issue. The pigtail has never been a problem for me. Yeah, just for the imager. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so interesting, even though I'm high, it's like a wall hugger. Did you see that, guys? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm very surprised. So I'm going to get positive to the guide. 
So, uh, Saibel, I think this would be a great time to explain some of these techniques step by step. So, you, you said wall yeah. hugger. You went through things quickly. Um, if you have a few minutes, let's just talk about your, your thought process. Well, I did. Yeah. So you and, see and the also, circulation in before, the alveoli view was running uh, anterior to posterior. So I gave positive to the guide. Let me show it again. So you see steps. Look so when, when if your leaflet is tethered, do you ever try to come a little bit more angled over the aorta, or you know, do you always uh, try no, to be I, perpendicular start, to the angular this plane? This was too angled. You see that it was too yeah. angled. So I'm going to correct it a little bit. Then I'm going a little bit pos positive on the guide fluoro, and then I'm going to go counterclockwise on the guide catheter. And that will hopefully improve my trajectory. And you can see it is. And I'm going to give a little bit more M. And I think now I'm right on the flail, correct? And my trajectory is slightly, is quite, be is quite good. Don't you agree with that? And I have enough height. So. Can you, can, can you talk about the role of MPR in coaxiality? Yeah. I think multi projection, uh, MPR imaging is one of the best ways to do these cases. You can see in four views, you have the bicom on the left side, the LVOD in the top, you have the three dimensional X LVOD below, and you have the three dimensional end face on the right side. And you can actually do the whole case with just one movement. So, um, it actually adds know. to the layer of safety too, because as he's doing all these maneuvers, you don't lose sight of the clip here. You know, you can see That's it in right. multiple in planes. So, you agree with that? Where I'm sure you do the same, right, Shushil? Yeah, I think NPR has changed it. NPR has made it, I think, for people that don't do a lot of clips, made clips a lot easier. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I think get, okay. it allows the coaxiality that all you know that it's sometimes difficult to see on uh, on 2D imaging. Yeah, I, so I do it all with NPR. Yeah. yeah. And the other advantage of NPR, in my opinion, is when the imaging is difficult. Is um, you know, you can get one view somewhere, and then you can do the whole case from that one position. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. That's more so yeah, on the tricuspid side than the too. mitral, yeah, but even on the mitral, it helps. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So this clip is rotated a lot, so I don't like that. Okay, I'm just... Sure, yep. Uh -huh. coming. Any comments from the panelists on uh, different thoughts? So this is an XTW, correct? Is it? Yes. Yeah, this is an XTW. Go off, floor. I was, so I just rotated it a lot. Fluoroscopically, it is diving a little medially, okay? And so, so in your upper panel. So, so I'm going to take the M off. A little bit M off, yeah. Because I think it's going to go down in the commissure. Okay. I think we had a question from one of the panelists or comment. I, uh, I have experienced some cases of the rotation of the clip when you introduce the XTR, XTW into the LV, uh, how do you uh, deal with that? Great point, Saibo. How do you make sure it's not going to continue to clock? You know, what are you doing yeah, here? Yeah, so that's why, that's why I'm, transmitting, I'm transmitting the talk above the clip valve. See that? So I'm trying to, uh, I may have to use some advanced steering because I need, I'm losing height. So I'm going to clockwise the guy. Exactly. Right? And then I'm going to use the say A and off. A and then... Then put M, yeah. And then I'm putting M on. And that way I got more height. Did you see that? <clears throat> yeah. So why don't you explain that for everyone again? So you put A, use the A knob, put M and rotate the guide to gain more height. Is that correct? Yes. So you come to, seem to be coming over the aorta a little bit more again though, right? In that yeah, NPR. I don't know why that's happening though. Um, With the anterior restriction, don't you guys think in a way that could be yeah, an advantage? Yeah. You know, I'm just yeah. gonna pull it. One one solution is to put the guide a little bit further so that you know it comes from the middle of the atrium. You think so? I think I why don't I try it here? You can try, you can try. It looks good. It is just coming at an angle. So you will get a little we are, we are, we are, we are already quite lateral. Do you see that? More of yeah. the so you know, if it comes perpendicular, it'll be better. Sure. I, I guess that the, the question is I will put a little bit of uh, but, but actually, I think this this angle might actually help you capture the posterior leaflet a bit easier. Because yes. if we go straight down, I think with the frail segment and the gap, you may have more difficulty. I, I think worthwhile trying it here with a X, XT type of uh, clip. Uh, because you don't want to manipulate too much, really. Yeah. 
Yeah. I think that's a great point. We were discussing earlier because I think you know, the, the height, you know, the height of the posterior flail and the restriction of the anterior. You might want to come over the aorta a little bit, like he is. It might be beneficial. I don't know. Yeah, like so I'm, I'm going to close it uh, down. You want to check the uh -huh. grippers? Oh, yes, we're going to check the grippers? You check the grippers. That's, yeah, that's a great point, Sushil, because of the restriction, you know, really that change of angulation coming more from the aortic side, you, you may get a ch so better chance to engage that's posterior, mm -hmm. and that's anterior. I think it's anterior. There you go. I wasn't completely in line. That's one of the things you have to be careful. Dot is posterior, Seibel. Dot is posterior. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we're down here. So I'm going to advance slowly. I'm going to close the clip. Is is that because you're medial, or do you always close when crossing? I I, I for yes, I close it a little bit. Yes, I do. Always okay. For for XT, I'm I think going in slowly. Closer. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good point. And I think yeah. I'm in a good position. And I'm just you're going, going more lateral, lateral now. Are you a little lateral here or no? Yeah, you're right down the middle of the. Belt no, I think I'm right yeah. down the middle. No posterior. It's good. Okay. Yeah. And then I'm just below the valve. And now I'm going to open the clip. And I'm going to slowly pull it up. And I'm already and I'll nice in the position. Yeah. Now let's do 3D I'll end face. Again. Yeah, there you go. Bottom and do you right. think I'm in a good position? I think we're great. Yeah. Slightly counterclock, huh? Sli I agree. Slightly, slightly counterclock, counter yes. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I agree with you. I'm going to do slightly counterclockwise with what Sami says. I always and listen lock, to Sami. Lock the front. Right. Lock the front, yeah. Sami, do you like that? I like Actually, it. Be, yeah, it looks like A and P are, are resting. You notice I'm not listening to Shushil? <laughs> <laughs> you can put the gain back up so we can see the leaflets. Yes. Coming up on the gain, yep. Okay. So I'm going to go, Shushil, you like that? Actually, it looks like you don't listen to me, so I'm not going to give my opinion. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Just a little traction. It looks like you'll be able to get it. It, it looks so very, very It nice. looks good. Uh, you think I, I should just do clockwise yeah. now and, and take a little posterior in? No. Yeah, I think oh, so. I think I, it, you just got to make sure it's not curling. That's not. I think it looks good there. Yeah. Yeah. It looks okay, right? That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. yeah it looks good. The anterior leaflet, you're just not seeing well here. Your shadow. Yeah, but I, I can see it here, actually. We can see it. We have a bit of better quality on the screen here. Yeah, it's okay. a little bit better quality. You, see good and you can yeah. see the bouncing. Moving nicely. Yeah. 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 Very yeah. nice. So, Shushil, you know what I'm going to do, Shushil? I, I agree with your post, Syria. I'm actually going to do, uh, I think the position is great. They, do you see that we're orienting the clip? Orientation is fine. The only issue is how much of posterior did I get, right? So right. I'm right. I think you need to be optimize. careful because sometimes in these, you, you can get the cords, right? How do you make sure you don't just have the cord and you actually have leaflet right there? Because the, the, that leaflet is going above there, right? Yeah, uh, you, you you get a maybe, right? I don't think you have posterior because I don't see a gripper interacting yeah. in the leaflet. It's going above. Yeah, the gripper is not bouncing. So I would re pull up just the. I pulled uh, it back, the, right? Just pull the posterior. The right? Is that the gripper going back? I don't know. It's not coming back. No. Actually, I'll be interested in seeing the pigtail reading. Oh, see, there it is. See that? Use it I pull yeah. it back. Now pull it back. Uh, yeah. Back. yeah. I'm going to open up yes. the clip. Right, and, and I'm just going to pull up a little bit, and go a little right, a little posterior, and clockwise a little bit to get it inside, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to close it, and now I'm going to close it. Pull up a little bit more, huh? Um, now you see nice interaction. I, I would come up a little higher better, too. Right? Yeah. But no, do you think you it is good? It worked. But now I don't it's like bouncing. You see, the clip is bouncing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I think. I'm I'm worried you have mostly tip and cord though, right? Because that leaf yeah, that's going up the, so high. No, the posterior leaflet. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, maybe not. No, I don't know. It's hard to see there. Yeah. That's why he doesn't can listen. See the other pressure coming down. No, can we see the hemodynamics? Yeah. It's good. It hemodynamics. looks very good. It looks oh, very nice. It's over, up and over now. What do you think? It's actually closed. You can see in the. Shushil, what do you think, Shushil? Can that looks, that looks good. Yeah. Is, so there's still a residual flail lateral, right? Is that what I'm seeing on the 3D? Yes, you're right. It is. So I think in some of those views, we saw that coming up and over. I think is that just that the flail was too wide and you didn't, couldn't capture all of it with one clip? Or do you think you could get this with one no, clip? No, there, the there was some residual flail. But I just want to make sure I've caught the pro 
to me, the 3D looks very nice. Bridge looks good. I, I just want to, but I agree with what Shushil's concern is, is about how much of posterior I got, right? No, so, I, I, I... Posterior may be okay, so but... Let's, what do you, you, like you want to do a traditional explain? Yeah, no, I, I think just... Come down. Yeah. The other no, pressure has improved. And I think there's only a lateral jet to me. There's a, I think there's a, just a slight... There is a slight... Uh, Jet on so either let's side, start, let's one start one trying to see yeah. what Shushil thinks about the insertion of the posterior leaflet. Shushil, you see that there is a there's both a jet on the medial side and the lateral side. Yeah. So I the guess the question is pretty small though, huh? Yeah. The, the question is, do but you want to move not. this a little bit more lateral, or since you have a jet on the medial, you'd say no, let's no, no, leave no. this. Yeah. I would I I would not move it lateral. I in 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 fact I would rather use it medial. Uh, can I can I ask you a question? That yes. this jet could be all coming from the lateral side. If you look at the ventricular side, you might be yes. able to tell where this jet is arising from. Yes. Because yes, you yes. can't tell from this one because I don't see a pizza medially. Mm. Nothing, nothing big not at all. It's just a little whistle. Do you want to do zero degree and just see? Can you do zero degree? Sure. Or or do a I ventricular. Think the is in. The do zero degree was quite helpful. So let's go for lateral to medial. Okay, so we're high up here. So I'll just keep it on continuous color and I'll advance the probe slowly. See, that's all, all lateral. lateral. That's See all that? lateral. And then get on. There's clip. Put color off. Do color compare. Yeah. See, the posterior is in, right? Yeah, yeah. And there is no medial uh, jet. Uh, it is, but and I guess no the jet. question with, with the, you used an XT clip, right? You want ideally nine millimeters of leaflet in, right? Yes, which I don't have. Which I don't think you have. If I see how much is out, I mean, you can measure that, but... So I, I think I should optimize. I the, agree with the, you. Yeah. Right? Is it, that what you're saying? My, that's my feeling, because I, I just... Yes, I do agree. There's a lot of leaflet out. Yeah. So let's, I mean, let's open the like clip. Four, four millimeters of clip in, or of leaflet in. Because I think it's it's important for, for the audience as well, that's you know, with an XT, yes, please. XT clip, you know, the, the last two rows of grippers at the tip no, no, don't no. grasp I, as well. I like that zero degree. Yeah. Stay in that zero degree. Oh, you, for, for optimizing? Yeah, that zero is great. Yeah. Okay, all right. I, zero that, degrees? Yeah, it's very good. You can actually see the posterior very well. Yeah, see that? Yeah, we'll just and focus actually, on the posterior. And actually, you can see less of posterior in. So, Greg, mm -hmm. I'm going to open the clip, and you're going to clockwise the guide. Yep. Clockwise as much as you can. Ready? I'm clockwise. Now. Clockwising? Yeah. Good. I'm opening the clip. And then, um, grippers. Dot was posterior. Dot, huh? Dots posterior. Dots posterior. Uh, dots posterior, sure. Positive. That's what you said before. Oh, dots. Yeah. Yeah. It dropped off, right? Dropped off, yeah. No, it didn't. No, it is not. It is not. Now it is not. But I think that's also a sign. If the clip is open and, and it works its way out like that without the grippers up, that's you No, no, grippers are off. sign. Well, I think it, yeah, yeah but it was moving up, much more with, with before the grippers went up. I think that was I sort of see. the concern. Now it's, oh, now it's on, that right? Good. Yeah. That's but lift it up. Just pull the, pull the. See, Saibal, I think your height is a little low. Huh? What are you saying? Saibal, let's exit off saying... of the um, okay. Saikong. Yes, okay. please. So, yeah. I don't think that's going to help. This is the best view I'm getting of the. Let's go back and forth. Can, can we see the X-plane? Yeah, sorry. Actually, that is quite good. And there, I think the grippers are moving correctly. See, it's moving. Clockwise, you guide? Mm -hmm. Yeah, redrop it. You want to open and close it? Okay. We have it. Uh, I think you've got a lot out, Saibal. Again? This is the part that I thought that a rotor hugger coming from a direction may be able to help you roll the posterior in a bit in more this. compared to just going I think we got better results straight, no? before we released it. Yeah. Hemodynamically, for sure. Mm -hmm. Do you want Color to check on? to make sure our orientation is okay? The clip? Yeah. There's a, there's a, looks like there's more regurgitation. There's a lateral jet, right? Yeah. The other option is to go. Uh, is the other option is to go a little uh, la medial and get a better space, 
and then oh, that's sorry, another, right? I would do the 3D MPR, huh? because it may have rotated. I agree. And like yeah. That. Yeah, okay, yeah. let's do the 3D MPR and work. And I'm going to, I may do a regrasp. Is that okay? Yeah, I think you should. I think you should. Yeah, I think your you angle. Yeah, we, our, we, our angle changed. We, we went more clockwise than we wanted. I think. Yeah, that's right. It's just too grainy. I agree with you. So I'm, I'm going to open the clip. Okay. I shouldn't have listened. I should have just deployed. <laughs> you had a good result. It's about the long-term result. I mean, I do worry at the XTs that you, if you don't have enough leaflet, right? How much leaflet do you, do you okay. want in there? Got it. So I'm going to go a little bit more medial. Hold on. Let's check orientation, no? Check orientation again. Yeah, did you? Did I will. I think it is too. It's this so, is, I think, what happened. I think, I think you, if you would look at that. clockwise. Now. Yeah, yeah so now just clock it a little bit and push the whole thing in a little bit, right? Yeah. And then I think you'll get now most I'm, of Now I'm better, right? A little more. I like this orientation much better. I, I would clock you and I touch more, but yeah, I think this you is good. You don't think you're too countered? Yeah, yeah I, mean, I would another, clock a little bit Another more. 30 minutes. Okay. Now, how about this? I like this orientation I, I, much better. You went very medially, so you will have a big jet laterally. So I would Which is okay. I, I can always put a, this is a big, the medial is the problem. I know, but I don't think you have a medial problem, at least 3D wise. It looks like you can. How about this? That is better. Position. Okay, there's much, much more. I see the anterior leaflet on. though. Anterior, I can see. Okay. I've got enough posterior, you agree? I, I, I like so. the orientation of the clip. I'm closing. Yeah, I think more posterior leaflet is in for sure. An anterior leaflet looks solid. I really like this position. How are your hemodynamics? Uh, they're yep. improved. Now yep. they've improved. Yeah. I like this much better, guys. Yeah, I think it's better. That looks good. That looks good. Yeah. And I'm just going to put a clip lateral. Or even nothing, I don't know. You want to see the palmy beans? I, I was very medial. Now, can you can you look, just flip that white into the ventricle so you can see just right there. Oh, okay, sure. The 3D shot? 3D shot, you know, like the, that blue and white? Yes, yeah, we're I doing do. that. So that way you know which side is coming from. Mm -hmm. It's hard to see there. Yeah, it's hard I think it's mostly see. lateral now. I, I, agree. I agree, yeah. Which is easier, you know, it's easier to put a lateral clip anyway, right? Yeah. So yeah, you're okay that I should deploy this clip? Uh, Just one second. Then on. Hemodynamics are great. The hemodynamics have improved a lot more. Can we just see a 2D of that posterior leaflet? I mean, I, I yeah, think it sure. looks a lot better. Can we just sort of show that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Much better. Huh? Much better. Mm -hmm. I like yeah, this. It looks better. Really. Right? Do you guys yeah, agree with that? Yeah, there's clearly a residual flare lateral though, right? You agree? Yes. Yeah. Which we can go and, and that's easier to pick up, right? So go lateral, go lateral. Yeah. That's... Put color there. I think we might need more cyber. Huh? We can't. I cannot. I tried. You're not getting it. I'm I'm clocking as much as I can. How about cyber? Yeah. What is the gradient? The gradient is going to be nothing. We can, we can check the gradient. Why? What's your idea? No, I, I was thinking you can reposition this one a little bit, but if you think you had tried enough, then it's different. Yeah, I just think posterior leaf, it looks funny to me. Well, I just think it looks funny, huh? right? And the question is, are we are we all, is there any way to move it a little more lateral? You know, I think Samir was mentioning pushing it in from where you were before. But look grasping. at the look at the pressure tracing. The E wave is less than the A wave. Yeah, no, I agree. No, if you're going to put a second one, then I think it's fine, yeah. I think this is a great position, though, Saibo. Uh, yeah. Looks very good. I, I always get a sense that the XD clip, the perpendicularity for such long clip is more important. Because it's quite easy. But we showed the perpendicularity, valve. right? You saw it. No, no. I, I think I this is a very good position. Very perpendicular for XD clip. So I probably would take this first and then decide whether and you, you want to take the posterior. Is, is knuckling? 
here? I don't I mean, think I the can... posterior leaflet is very good, Saibal, personally. Yeah, I, th I think I agree. I, I, I just okay, have concerns with that. try again. It is, it is possible just... that you have a cord there. You see the yeah. cord? Yes, so I that may be the reason why you can't go the, behind it. it. Yeah, yeah this, something's not right the way it looks. Can you just stay in this view and see and lift it? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to play with that. I'm opening, I'm going to pull the, I'm going to pull the uh, thing back, the gripper back. And it dropped off, as you can see. There, there it looks like it's really... And can you pull up higher, maybe? I don't know what's, what we're missing. I, I'm going to try that, too. I'm opening the grip. Opening the clip more, correct? Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Now, now 3D and face that to make sure we not lost orientation. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, this is a nice, pick, nice uh, uh, grasp. I think you're slightly lateral now. So that's good. Yeah. No, the orientation is too counterclockwise. But counter yeah, a little you bit. May yeah. need, you, may, you may need to adjust the clock rotation it, clock just it, to clock avoid it. that. Uh... I don't like this. See the orientation? Yeah. It's yeah. not correct. So, I mean, so is it, we have got to release the interior. Yeah. yeah. I got to release both. Okay. So let's go back and uh, it was, let's clock. But are you, you're, you're still caught on the interior there, right? No, I've, I've, I've lifted it off. Okay. okay. Let's go back to Biocom LBOT. Oh, it went very lateral, sure. Yeah. Okay, so I didn't like that. Yeah, there's some interaction. So you see how That's... we went, we, we wrote, we spun below the valve. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so we have to go, we either have to come back. That's not a good thing. This is not a good uh, thing. Something I don't like to do. <clears throat> so I think you go to a call of the posterior rivet. Okay. Sure. It's moving freely though. Yeah, it's moving it's freely. It's a good news. Good news. And it seems now go a little interior with the front, the guide, counterclock. But the orientation did not change while you are clockwise. Uh, Beautiful. I think this is a good place, Saibal. Okay, Bicom LBOT. Mm -hmm. I like this orientation. I like this location. I'm just hugging the posterior <laughs> a little bit more than the anterior is there, right? Medial jet I just told you exactly what Greg is saying. I'm, I'm just worried I'll have a medial jet. Are you, are you, oh, you, won't, you, won't, you won't have it. You won't have it. <laughs> okay. Can you explain Bicom? Oh. Um, just you are off too of MPR? Yeah. I think it's, oh, it's overclocking now for some reason. Looks like. Yeah. Be careful. Okay, just careful. We're just checking orientation. The, the clip is very open though. 180, is it? It's 180. Yeah, I'll, I'll open it. I'll close it a little bit. Okay. Saibo, you want me to go to Bicom Explain or, or just stay, on the, uh, stay in the No, no, here is good. I can't see it as well, so. It is I good, think good enough though. I've got a really good it, grasp. Lower. Yeah, lower, lower right? the grip. Yeah, yeah, lower the grip. I like that position, bro. I yeah. love it. Show me the three D end face. The yeah, gain yeah. down, you mean? No, yeah. you can you can focus on the big screen on the. Oh sure, yeah. Yeah, and just see the orientation is okay. If the orientation is okay, we should close. Yeah, this is good. The orientation is all right, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. yes, you can. What are you talking about? Do you have I, I think posterior. the posterior is on. Only... So I can't just do what you We got more posterior this time. Can we do the second frame to see how much posterior is in? Yeah. Before I close. Yeah, this time uh, there's more posterior. The right? grippers interacting. I, I... Yeah, yeah, it's jumping nice, right? like crazy. No, nice, yeah, yeah. nice, nice interaction with the gripper. So that looks good. Lock was your guide. Tiny bit. I like this one. Yeah, Saibal, much nicer. Great. Yeah. Lock. Lock, 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 Saibal. Much better. Yeah, and I don't see the... There is slight tethering of the leaflet, so medially there might be a jet, but it is the because best of... Hemodynamic, the best hemodynamic response yet, so... And I don't see a residual like... flail. Uh, maybe we do. Yeah, maybe not. I don't see it, so I think... Put color on. 
So there's no medial jet now. Did you see the moment there used to be a little bit of a medial jet? Yeah, yeah. there's nothing medial. There's nothing now. This yeah, is, this is the, the best result. result. This is the best result. Very good. Thank you. This and you don't good. need another clip anymore. I don't think we need another clip. I agree with you. Yeah. So, um, Colleen, do you want to come here? Don't do a Susie on me, please. Bible, let's do a check first. Yeah, let's yeah. do a check. Sure, sure, sure. Yes, I agree with you. The posterior was never really in properly. This was the best we got. So what do you so want you, to see? So you, you agree you should listen to me sometimes. I did. <laughs> yeah. I also want to suggest that I think we came in more we came in more medially and swept laterally, and maybe that helped with the interaction. Yeah, the, the posterior courts. looks mm. much better. You know. Shushil, thank you. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Even a blind squirrel stumbles on it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, shall we? I think the, uh, the uh, there's a small that's a, lateral jet. That's lateral, yeah. 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 Yep. And there's nothing medial. Can you go a little more medial? There's nothing medial. Colleen, do you agree with that? I agree. <laughs> you should say I concur. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are you I talking to Colleen or Susie? Let's do a gradient and check. <laughs> well, she's now, she's now, till now, she's behaving like a Colleen. Okay. They're saying, is she Susie or Colleen? <laughs> <laughs> she can't hear you guys, and so she's asking. <laughs> that's, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead. And you see how the E-wave is much less than the A-wave? That's usually a sign that there's no significant mitral stenosis. Uh, there's no significant uh, MR. And, and our so, systemic pressure is much higher than it was before. So, so well, the that, systemic pressure has gone to 142. Yeah. Okay. That's another thing that great. So, uh, this is the JS I think it was game. Greg's fault. He didn't clockwise the guide properly. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't aggressive enough. I, yeah. I actually think it, I think we came in and swept that core. I'm just I'm joking. Thinking. The coronary veins are normalized. Yeah. Saibo? All right. Saibo? Yes. Yeah, this is yes. Jace Kim from South Korea. Nice to meet you. Yes. <laughs> Long time no see. Oh, nice talking so, to you. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think, <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I have uh, two questions. One is, uh, is it possible to grasp with the NT? system in this case i think it's not yes yes i think mm -hmm. i think yeah, the yeah. nt would also work yes, yes. the other one is uh, i think the xt uh, recent uh, g4 system we can use a separate grasping technology yes. so it, g4 I, i'm not sure is possible or is helpful in this case we we can grasp at, at first uh anterior and pull back and then more you grasping. can do that yeah. you can absolutely do that because the anterior was lower down you yeah. can grasp the anterior and then pull over Clockwise, yes. But you see over here, as uh, Shushil and Samir pointed out very nicely, that there's much more posterior leaflet in this grasp, right? Yeah. Even Susie, Susie, do you agree with that? <laughs> All right. So I, I just, I want to, you know, Saibo did this so very quickly, but I think two important points to emphasize uh, that uh, Shushil, Greg do you mind if I uh, deploy? Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the, especially with the XT, they checked multiple times about the orientation. With the XT clip, especially if you're not oriented to the to the line of coaptation, you can really you know make things worse. So he really quickly kept checking orientation. I think that's an important component as well. So I'm deploying the clip, and I'm having a view where I can see the clip open. More yeah, it's not opening up. Now go to neutral, and then positive side of neutral. Good. I'll take this off. This one. Keep that here. Take the cap off. Colleen, don't do a Susie on me today. It's not. When we get upset with Colleen, we call her Susie. They never call me Susie. What do they call you when they're upset with you? Nothing. Dr. Carr. They, call me Dr. <laughs> they say yes, doctor. Others, they call me Cyborg. <laughs> no, I, 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 I think... Would you, Maybe they call, call him Samir or Sushil or Raj. Or... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Raj. Yeah. I, I mean, I think they, with the XT, there are some issue, concerns, and I think it's important to orientation, you know, the, making sure you have more as much of the leaflet as possible because if you just have the last, in, the XT versus the NT has six rows of grippers versus four. If you just get the last four with the XT, it's actually less strength on the on the leaflets than if you put an NT and got all four. Those last two rows of grippers have less strength. So I think those are important considerations in trying to I optimize agree with you, this key. Shushil, that's a good point. Now go to neutral. Uh, in, in Korea, do they have the G4 available in Korea? 
Yes, it's available. Oh, it's available? I yeah. see. You got it. Yeah. So you guys are using G4 right now? Yeah. Right. In Japan, you have some of it. That's it. Eight, eight, eight rotations. Good. Eight, and pull it back. Ooh, it's too grainy. And then pull the clippers back. Good. Sure. And so I'm just pulling it back. We're deploying the clip. This is the moment of truth that I can see a beautiful uh, asymmetrical orifice. And you can see a very tiny jet laterally, which is not going anywhere. I'm not even sure, Floro, mm -hmm. we need to uh, do anything about it, right? So we should ask the members. We should do a proper analysis and see what they think, whether we should actually put another clip at all. Um, so any, any comments from the panelists? Uh, would anybody, uh, is everybody happy with this? What are the reasons to put a second clip? Any thoughts? They're really anterior, Cybele. Yeah, I like. yeah. I mean, the one consideration I would pay on that 3D, you still see a small residual flail. This is 86 year old tissue. It doesn't, you know, it's probably not great tissue. When you have a small flail, do you, is there any concern that it's going to work its way out? Would you put a second clip, not for the MR, but to stabilize this first grasp? Cyborg, you got to pull back. Do you see yes. this? Yeah, I'm, try I'm just trying to see what's, why is it doing, behaving like that? Okay. Good. Really anterior too. All right. I okay. think that's a, that's a good point. If you have gone with the earlier deployment, then you will have some instability and residual jet. Then the yeah. second clip, oh. mm, maybe uh, another NT or XT. Uh, sorry, another NT uh, clip will be good. Sure. But in this case, for 86 years old, it looks wonderful, actually. Very actually, good if you look at the LA pressure, you can see the V wave is less than the A wave. Do you see that in the pressure tracing? So this tells me, I mean, we can, this is the end result. Can you want to see what the gradient is and whether we can, do you want to explain that uh, mean lateral jet? I mean, the other thing is I can just put an NT there or an XTR. Well, I, mean, I, I, I guess, Saibo, well, I think all of us agree that for the MR, there's not a need to do it. The question I have for you is, do you think there's any reason to do it for increase the stability of this first grass? I, I, I actually think so. I agree with that. I actually want to put another clip there. Stability, they're saying. I explain that, Jed, because it's actually moving a lot. And I do want to do it because of stability. Can and you I show us the floral? To... Mm -hmm. Can you show the floral? Yeah, you see the floral? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, part of it is that there's still a small residual flail on the 3D that you see, yeah, right? Yeah. When you, Let's do, when you, you agree with just using it on one XTR? We have enough leaflet. I I am not uh, too keen on it myself, but... Uh, do you see do you see how the I'm posterior leaflet well, is When, when you need a right command there, about be my a second concern. clip for oh, stability... You just want to use an NTR? Yeah, maybe NT an I would use, but not definitely not XT. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's All right. We I'm, can use an NTR. Just because that, that area, the posterior yeah. leaflet there. But we need to go so there. This, this part is interesting for me, though. Uh, when you made a comment about having a second clip for stability when the jet isn't so great, how, how do you gauge? Is it on floral echo or how? Or is it just a sense uh, you you're know, getting? You uh, know, there's no right answer because this time we got a nice posterior bridge. Do you want to show a 3D of this and show them uh, the amount of... Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just we're making sure we're, there's we're, no effusion see, for sure. NTR, yeah. yeah. It would look okay. <clears throat> but I, I kind of like, you know, I just saw a patient the other day who came to me and I'd done his uh, mitoclip and it was much worse than this. And I put his mitoclip in 2017 and he presented with shortness of breath one year later with severe shortness with a partial clip detachment. So I actually agree. I actually want to put another clip there close by. Uh, I was willing to do an XTR, uh, but I, I, it's okay. I'll try an NT. I mean, Saibu, you, you should do what you feel comfortable, whatever you would normally do. I mean, I think... No, it's you, okay. You, I mean, uh, this, is a, this is a good thought process. And, you know, we are always, we are quite medial. I always believe that one should put a nice clip in the middle of A2P2. So I think, and we're so medial, we've got a very big orifice. A small clip in the middle, uh, on the side... I don't think it will be a problem. You agree yeah, with that, Greg? I agree. So an NT regular, correct? Yeah. You know, yeah. From my perspective, guys, uh, you know, surgically, if you have a chronic MR patient, the leaflets are always pretty thick and have, have had a lot of reaction to them. I'm, I'd be much more concerned about acute cases where the leaflets haven't been beat up for a long time, that they tend to be a lot more delicate and in terms of taking suture and all that stuff. But this guy has, you know, he's, you know he's, his leaflets look pretty thick. But I, I mean, I, I would say to answer the panelists, uh, to me, it's almost a gut 
you know, the, the leaflets look thickened. It's a chronic. There's you a chronic process. I, I, I don't feel strongly about it, but, you know, there's nothing wrong with stabilizing the leaflet on it. So if you're super happy with the grasp and the leaflet's of good quality. Well, I'm definitely happier with the yeah. grasp. Yeah. And I don't think we can do much more MR reduction with the E wave, much less than the A wave. Right? Mm -hmm. In your pulmonary veins, you said are normalized, right? Yeah, yeah, I'll double check. Uh, again, pulmonary veins yeah. are normalized, yes. Pulmonary veins. Yeah. yeah, it's normalized. See, that's completely normal. Yeah. And systolic dominant, yeah. 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 Systolic yeah, dominant with a blood pressure 144 by 73. So I, I've got a question. Since we started the case by saying we're happy with. Uh, I know. One plus. Uh, sure. We're happy with the grasp. Leaflets look thick. You know, is, is this the enemy of, you know, good here uh, by putting an additional clip? Uh, I, we, can still, we can still stop. You know, we just, this is a discussion. No, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just saying we should no. have something specific that we're trying to treat. Um, are, are, do people feel like we don't have a, a good no, grasp No, everyone agrees the point? grasp is very good. Yeah. I'm it's a more, more it's a theoretical the concern. Theoretical is, yeah, I understand. Yeah, theoretical. I mean, I'm not no... concerned. Huh? huh? I am not concerned. It's not going to come out of it. So no, I don't the, think so. So the clip is rocking because the anterior leaflet is, uh, you know, uh, restricted, yeah, and, restricted. It's and the posterior is prolapsed. Yeah, okay. prolapsing. So it's going to do that little dance, but I don't think it's a big deal. No, where I is it going to come out? No, I don't think so. No, I no. think you know we prepared it, but I think we should probably not do it. Hmm. Let's do a color. Let's ask Sherry. What did she think, Sherry? <laughs> No. Can you see uh, more laterally? Can yes, you explain it, laterally and see if there's a residual prolapse? That's a, that's lateral. It's a, it's not. What color there? Yeah. I mean, there's a tiny prolapse there. And sometimes with the XTW, you may not be able no, to no, get no. that close. You may not be able to get that close, and if you are not close, you will leak in between. I don't think it's worth it. You know, just let it be. You know. You can always put a clip if it doesn't feel good. Right. Yeah. I agree with you, Samir, that, that restricted... You don't want me to try NT, yeah. NTR? No, why bother? No, but so see, the difference between you and Greg is that Greg has to do it while he's on pump. You can yeah. bring them back <laughs> and do it again. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> The the thing is that I think, the patient, I think the downside, sure the downside here is, the downside here is it causing it and making it worse, and you can always come back and reclip him. But I don't think this. I agree with you. He's not going to get an SLD with this. Um, uh, there's plenty of tissue there, so I guess yeah, the other 140 too, blood right, pressure. Lateral, the post the posterior leaflet is is kind of knuckled right there too. Might be hard to get a good to grasp. Anyway, right? Exactly, It'd be hard to grasp the posterior. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think we should just leave it. Okay. Can you just show me one 3D of the uh, valve? Sure. I, yeah. I, the you more I think about bridge, it, yeah. I just think I'm going to leave it. If he was 65, I would say, let's do it. That's true. No, let, I treat everyone as 65. So you yeah. would do it if no, he was 65? No, no, no. Saibal, this guy, if you if we mess it up, he cannot be operated easily. His, lumb his lumbar yeah. is perfect. Too. He's you got a, a big, bridge. beautiful yeah. bridge. Okay. Beautiful All bridge. Right. All right, it's okay. We are we're done here. All right. Huh? No, no. Yeah. What are you treating? He's, he's really knuckled posteriorly. The posterior grab's gonna be challenging. He's got a lot of Explain a that lot of restriction posterior. anteriorly there, so you're not gonna be able to get right next to it. It's not a great big orifice actually if you look at it. No, yeah. I know I was actually gonna measure a, an area right so. now, but yeah, you could just go lateral to that. Just yeah, the like, more I think about it, I, I just think that it's a, such a good grasp. You know, why spoil it? And maybe and if it didn't end to you the first time. With a normal pulmonary vein, LA yeah. pressure, which has improved dramatically, 16. A blood pressure is 133, 140. Is he on any anotropes? He's just on, he's on phenylephrine. He's on phenylephrine. Mm -hmm. and, he, and you kept that on because it was, when he came in, his blood pressure was low, but now it's Correct. not. Correct, yeah. I'm, I'm going to come back dude, off the on whole it. prolapse and flare is taken care of. I, I'm really... I agree with everybody. I'm going to take it out if that's okay with you guys. Okay. Yeah. Sounds yeah. great. I think so it's we, very reasonable. So let's say the final LA pressure, which is 17 now. And I'm just going to show what I do in the groin. So you see how the pigtail was helpful. 
Uh, yeah, I, think, I will. You know, and and the other thing I want to show you guys in the groin. Can you just focus in the groin? But before, if before you have you a four French groin. guide, if you have a four French catheter and a guide just close to it, you usually don't get any bleeding. You can see over there, there's no bleeding in the groin. So we have usually no problem about that. Uh, uh, I had a question. Go, if you remove the yes. guide, the LA yes. pressure falls. I've seen that. It's actually a good point. Do you want to let's do you want to let's watch it? Let's watch yeah, it. Yeah, let's watch right? it. Watch it while yeah, you okay. do it. So let's can you put up the cellar pressure? Can you monitor that pressure now? And what is it? Record that. Okay. And this is a good pro proof of principle about the V wave. V wave. Right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Or the DCW. So I'm going to get the kind although, negative. Although his gradient's probably going to be pretty as low as his LAP is now. I wonder what his. Okay. Okay. So let's ready to pull. Okay, let's pull the guide out. We get the guide negative. It's very important to make it negative. And Ready? pull the guide out. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, now let's check. This is the LA pressure after we pulled out. It dropped to 17. Yeah, Not four millimeter right? drop. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know. So? Yeah. 18, 18, 18 to 17. No, no, 21 to 17. No, no, it was 17. No, no, I... It was 20, it was 17 before you pulled the guide out. Didn't change. Really? Yeah. No, 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 that's the white one. Is that the white one? That's the white one's on. Okay, good. All right, so we're going to pull the pigtail out. Okay. And can you measure this pressure? And, Floro, just one minute. Um, and this is the L L RA pressure. But well, his RA pressure is also high. Yeah. It doesn't, doesn't have a big gradient. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. Okay, good. Okay. Do you want right? to check so the septum for the shunt? Is right to left or left to right? Yeah, yeah can you show me? Sure, we'll do that. Mm -hmm. Um, do you want to just gently close yeah. it? Before you close it. Yeah, left to right. Yeah, it's left, left to right. Shunt. It's a small hole. And then you want to push it down. No? No? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want to leave a yeah. big tail in? So 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 how often are you closing? Do, uh, yeah, we usually use a single per close. Uh, and uh, sometimes we put a figure of eight stitch and that's it. And overall, the function is quite good. You want to tighten it up? We didn't measure an ACT actually. Yes, we did. It was going yeah, we've been checking Dr. Okay. Carr. Just tighten it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so I, it I, looks good. Of, huh? Yeah. And the clip no. is much more stable. Time that. Let's see how it goes. Mm -hmm. So, um, no today? any other questions and discussions? It looks the final pressure, the final images look really good. Yeah, beautiful. What do you think, Colleen? Is there yes, any. Yes, I know that. Yeah. I have one question. I mean, I, before, yeah. if we have any, I want to ask any questions on the panel. Yeah. But if not, I'm going to, I want to acknowledge everybody before I leave. Yeah, I, I have one question. Is is there any recommend, recommended, recommended some routine follow echocardiography after metrically? Um, any schedule? recommendations? Yeah, yeah. Any schedule? Yeah, we, uh, Gobriel does the, we do the final, we do, we, after we deploy, we always check everything, the LV function. He's looking at pericardial effusion. We've had a case before. Um, he's looking at the overall ejection fraction, which actually hasn't gone down, even though the blood pressure has gone up. Um, so we look at, and then of course we look at the bridge if something bad has happened. Yeah. The other last thing you always mention, you also look at the ASD, as uh, Samin mentioned, that you don't want it to be right to left, because right to left can be really bad, um, and you know hypoxic, and you can see that uh, it's not the case, and you can see he's showing some very good. Deep transgastric pictures, which look that the the the, the waste is really good, and good. But before, um, any other questions? Was the question about follow up echo or just yeah, the follow up echo? Yeah, schedule. Yeah, follow up. Oh, echo. follow up, follow up. Yeah, we yeah. do an echo in the morning tomorrow. We'll send the patient home after the echo, um, and then he's going to come to see us at one month. And at one month, <laughs> if we do an echo at a clinically follow up, and a six minute walk, and then at next next visit is at one year. So we see the patient yeah. one year next year. Yeah, that's thank it. You. So one month and then one year. Mm -hmm. And if they are not doing well, we see them earlier than that. Uh, but we always watch the echo. The one month echo is very important. because That's where you can sometimes pick up uh, detachments which didn't occur on discharge, but can see at one month. Usually by one month, if it doesn't dis uh, 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 detach, usually it's fine after that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What is your plan for the antithrombotics after the procedure? Oh, uh, nothing. Just a uh, baby aspirin and sometimes Plavix. Yeah. So, Saibal, you are. I'm discharging all these people same day. 
why do you keep them overnight what are you going what I, do you I, do? i was told i don't know with ali you can answer this question that if you don't if you discharge them home in the same day there's they you lose some medicare pricing no no, no. that's nonsense because there's not a hospital stay overnight <laughs> I don't know the he's saying he's somebody is saying it doesn't make a difference. So no. we can we can we are we are discharging all watchmen home the same day but my trips we usually keep them for one day. Yeah because I'm thinking also, it, because of the covid and all this I started discharging them all and it works beautifully it was because there's nothing is going to happen to the my truck what can happen. Yeah no I agree I have only sent one patient home on uh, due to covid that they went there was no beds so the patient went home but all other mitral clips we tend to we just uh, by routine keep them one day we yeah. don't send them to icu they stay in the they stay in the regular telemetry bed uh never we send them to icu unless they're sick or something bad bad happened mm. but just a food uh, for thought because i don't think there is any medical reason to keep them in the hospital no i agree with you I think we just have to be uh, careful over time whether that leads to further cuts in in reimbursement though if uh you know that will long term potentially affect it right I I think I agree with Shushil we have to be very careful if we do that because they may actually change the reimbursement uh, so we don't yeah it's it's just a good maybe yeah. maybe important for Shushil because he has 10 15 more years to work maybe yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right hey. So you you say uh, you you and Cybel are old. I just want to clarify yeah. that for the group here that you you and Cybel are old and I'm young and youthful looking. Exactly. I know that. I you all know that. Don't rub it in. And I'm older than both of them, so that's even <laughs> crazy. So, uh on behalf of everybody, can I just say uh Andrew, you should come forward and say uh, hi to everybody. Andrew is an outstanding we have four cardiac anesthesiologists. Five. Uh five actually and uh four of them are excellent in imaging. <laughs> Andrew is <probably, laughs> Andrew Andrew was not the very good one we he yeah, got, I got he was the B yeah. team at 5:00 o'clock in the Nobody evening Nobody wanted to work at 5:00 o'clock yeah. <laughs> And so um and we had a team who just stayed overnight Gabe Gabe usually doesn't like to work on the weekdays he prefers the weekends because he gets double time <laughs> So I on behalf of everybody in this in the hospital we want to say thank you very much Kamza Hamida Thank you okay. very much I will thank you it's, yeah. it was a wonderful great case case. interesting discussion great thoughtful case as always wonderful both you Greg and the rest of the team thank you Saibal again so i think we are going to move to the talks and the next talk is going to be by my co-moderator Dr Sushil Kodali who is uh, at uh, Columbia University he is one of the leading uh, internationalist and structural uh, the Ball Center director uh he is going to talk about the who is the best candidate for mitral clip uh in the patient in heart failure patients great uh thanks samir i'll try and make this uh stay on time um so you know this this discussion is a little bit about different than here my disclosures uh the, the topic i have is a little bit different than the case that sai will show so um it's really a you know mitral regurgitation obviously as we all know is not a single entity You know, in the case that we saw today, it's a little bit of a mix of, of Cybels, and it's not always so clean. Uh, but the, you know, Cybels case was a tethered anterior leaflet, but a posterior flail. We're talking about most of the heart failure population. We're talking about functional mitral regurgitation, which is either from LV dysfunction and tethering of the of the leaf of the papillary muscles in a dilated annulus, or what we're seeing more and more is AFib and annular dilatation. But basically, it's it's a loss of leaflet coaptation. most often from annular enlargement and but can also be from uh, the papillary muscle uh, tethering and we see this in heart failure you know it's it's a common feature you get progressive remodeling you know myocardial injury because of neural hormone activation and and the shape of the lv changes it be from uh, a sort of a elliptoid shape to a sphere and then you get these tethering of the leaflets um and you see here there's you know there's sort of two different like uh, a case where you get progressive lv dilatation as you see in the bottom you get displacement of the papillary muscles tethering of the leaflets and and severe mr but you can also just get it in an ischemic mr from a tethered posterior leaflet and you get this eccentric jet which again can be very challenging for any repair technologies both surgical and transcatheter because you get this tethering of the posterior leaflet and you can't bring the anterior leaflet over to coapt but you know this all is part of a vicious cycle you get volume overload lv dilatation fmr more volume overload worsening fmr more volume overload and the question is can mitral clip interrupt this cycle or slow at least slow the progression 
And because, you know, heart failure has really obviously changed over the last decade. And, you know, we get initially it was just diuretics, then lots of other medications, neurohormonal beta blockers, ACE inhibitors, and other drugs. Then more about by the pacing, cardio maps to try and keep patients out of the hospital. Uh, and, and, you know, with all of these therapies, we sort of improve their functional status. And th this period where you, their improved functional status can hold for years, you know, at times in some patients. But then when they decompensate, the question is, wh where does MitraClip fit? You know, at this point, do you, does that help them come back up or should we have done it earlier? Then event, obviously the end result in, in a lot of these patients is advanced therapies with LVAD and transplant. So the question again is MitraClip. And you know, obviously most of the data we have is from the COAP trial. Um, you know, and it was 614 patients with uh, heart failure uh, and uh, despite maximally tolerated goal-directed medical therapy, that had still three to four plus MR and remained symptomatic. And these were randomized one-to-one -to, -one to CLIP or just continued uh, goal-directed medical therapy alone. And this was, oops, sorry. This was the initial presentation in the New England Journal and it was a pretty dramatic result. When you look at you know, hospitalization for heart failure or death from any cause, there was, at two years, there was significant reduction in heart failure hospitalizations and death, which is, uh, was, was, to be honest, was a little bit unexpected. But you see that the curves really start to separate at, at year one. Um, and in one year, it, especially in mortality, the, the separation is not great, although heart failure separation is quite significant. And it's important to keep in mind that these benefits are on, on for patients that were already on all these other therapies that have been shown to reduce mortality, right? ACE inhibitors, beta blockers, uh, by V pacing, ICDs, and MitraClip showed a reduction despite uh, those patients being all, all of these other medications. But obviously, you know, there were two studies and, you know, and that's where a lot of this controversy started with both COAP and MitraFR published in the same issue of the New England Journal. And with Mitra FR, you did not see that benefit. When you look at this death or heart failure hospitalization at one year, um, you know you see the separation in, in COAP, but you don't see it in Mitra FR. And there's been a lot of discussion about reasons why. Um, you know, the patient populations were different. You know, when, first of all, Mitra FR was a smaller study, 304 patients versus 614, and the MR entry criteria was different. They used the the uh, ESC and European guidelines, which included an ERO greater than 20 or regurgitant volume of greater than 30 cc's. COAP used the US guidelines where it's a little bit more stringent with an ERO greater than 30 or regurgitant uh, volume of 45 cc's. And so the mean ERO in Mitra FR was less, 31 versus 41. And the LVs and diastolic volumes were larger in Mitra FR, 135 uh, uh, per meter squared versus 101. So these were patients in general that had larger LVs, and, and less MR. And so, you know, the same ERO of 30 is not the same in every patient. This is a patient with an EF of 22% with an ERO of 30 and the LV volume is 310. So the recursion fraction is much smaller than in this patient with an EF of 60, that same ERO of 30 that has a much higher recursion volume. In this patient on the right, MR correction is likely to be beneficial, whereas this patient on the left where the LV is burnt out, getting rid of this MR is probably not going to make a difference. And so those are important considerations. And this is part of the sort of the conceptual framework that uh, Milton Packer and Paul Graber published in Jack and this question of proportionate versus disproportionate MR. And the concept being, you know, there as the LV dilates, there, you know, so, and you there MR is going to be proportion is going to proportionally increase in these patients. So if you're on this line, that's proportionate MR. And so below this line, this is not severe MR. Whereas when you're above this line, it's disproportionate. And if you look at the overall average population, Mitra FR fell over here in sort of the proportionate MR and COAP as a group fell over here. And obviously there are some patients in COAP that are way over here and some patients that are over here. I think that's an important consideration. It's also important that the MR assessment is, is variable. And they had these strict guidelines uh, you know, the majority of patients were enrolled by the ERO criteria, but there were patients with an ERO between 0.2 and 0.3 that had other criteria met, about 10% of patients with either, you know, regurgitant volume over 45 cc's or regurgitant fraction over 40 cc's. And, uh, and then there are patients without an ERO that were met by meeting other criteria, much smaller amount. But these were patients that had generally uh, smaller LVs, as I said, than in mitra FR. LV and systolic dimension had to be less than 70 
no pulmonary hypertension, RV failure, and EF between 20 and 50. So this is sort of the COAP population. These are the patients that benefited the most. The other differences were the COAP had a CEC that confirmed that patients were failing maximally tolerating goal-directed medical therapy, whereas MITRE-FR was much more liberal and much more of a real-world design. And then the procedural results were better. Um, you know, the acute results in terms of, you know, uh, less residual MR, the rate of procedural complications, and really, as Seibel mentioned earlier, a durable result. 5% of patients had three plus or greater MR at 12 months in COAPT versus 17% in MITRE-FR. So these patients get in COAP got a much better result. And when we looked at the longer term results, and we, as we said earlier, if you get a good result at six months, in general, it's been durable. And when you look at COAPT going out to three years, this benefit is maintained. And if anything, it starts to continues to sort of maintain that degree of benefit. Um, when you look at combination of mortality or heart failure hospitalization with a very strong p-value and a number needed to treat a 3.4. And when you look at the safety endpoint of looking at device-related complications, SLDA rates were very low, 0.7%. And really, if you didn't get one in the first 30 days, it remained stable after three years. You know, device embolization, same thing. If you got an acute result, it was maintained and you didn't see any of these device-related complications. In terms of progressive uh, heart failure, there, there was some progression at, uh, at uh, three years uh, of patients that went on to transplant and LVAD, uh, but th these are important. And the acute result in, in COAP was good. You know, the majority of patients, 93% had two plus or less MR, which was, was, which was the goal. Um, and then it was, this is important because the outcomes are really determined by the procedural result. If, if you had residual MR three or four plus, the outcomes were not great. They were similar to goal-directed medical therapy, but you had, if you had two plus or less MR, those are the patients that did well. Um, and we can learn something from the crossovers as well. You know, after the two-year endpoint, patients were allowed to cross over, and there were a total of 58 patients that crossed over. Uh, and when you looked at patients that crossed over, the acute result was good. Um, you know, again, two plus or less in 96% of patients. So these patients got a good result, even though it had been two years since they were enrolled. And so when you look at these patients, the, the this yellow line are patients that sort of landmarked it when they crossed over they are similar to the MitraClip arm in the original COAP trial. So even though they were treated two years later, they still received the same benefit. And in this multivariable analysis in the, in the goal-directed medical therapy only group, treatment MitraClip had a, had a uh, positive effect. And then we also learned that there are patients that respond and not respond. And so again, patients that were, that were responders, um, did much better. And these were patients in general that had less MR, uh, one, one or two plus. Uh, these were patients that had less uh, RV systolic pressures uh, as well. And, and patients that, these patients got a tremendous clinical benefit. They got nearly a 15-point uh, increase in uh, KCCQ status. So the health status was improved at one year. And those patients that got a 10-point increase had better clinical outcomes with lower rates of death, hospitalization, uh, or mortality. And pulmonary hypertension as well. These patients in general, all patients did better. Lower PA pressure patients did, did overall better, uh, but the baseline PA pressure uh, still had benefit. So, and one important point, we talked in the case today about gradients and creating mitral stenosis. And they, this is an analysis looking at mitral valve gradient and outcomes based on gradient. And, and patients were split into quartiles. So the, 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 the fourth quartile had a mean gradient of 7.2, which is fairly high. Gradients range from 1 to 13. But when you look at these quartiles as separated by gradient, there was no difference in the two-year outcomes of death or heart failure hospitalizations. And this is different than how we think of degenerative. So in these functional patients, you know, with a mean gradient of 7, they still had good outcomes. So it's very different. That's an important learning point. So we've learned quite a bit. Treatment with mitroclip in patients with heart failure uh, despite gold regimen therapy, it results in sustained clinical benefit out to three years. The late treatment in these crossovers provided the same clinical benefit. And the clinical outcomes were linked to the quality of life benefit. Um, and, you know, higher residual gradients did not uh, get rid of the benefit, and those patients still had benefit. And But future studies will need to be uh, done to determine whether indications should be broadened. 
you know, this is a very narrow population of, you know, patients on optimal medical therapy. Should we be implementing this earlier? Are there certain anatomic restrictions that we can get rid of? You know, and where does this fall in the algorithm is an important consideration. And so the ideal candidate has favorable anatomy. You know, this lack of calcium, no clefts, you know, not really broad jets, small mitral valve area. You know, this patient on the right has a broad jet in this commercial view across multiple, less likely to get a good outcome than this patient, which has a very central jet. And patients with proportionate MR, as we said, will benefit more than those with disproportionate MR. Patients that are symptomatic are the ones that we should be focusing on, but we should be focusing on earlier treatment. Don't make the patient fail multiple rounds of medical therapy. And I think that's one of the challenges, you know, go forward earlier than, than last, than waiting too long. So I'll stop there and uh, thank you very much. Excellent presentation. I said that, uh, you know, it was uh, very good. I, I don't know if Cybel is back or not, but- uh, I'm back. You are back. Okay. Right. You want to present uh, sure. your presentation? Sure. You First are, of all, thank you very much uh, for allowing us to do this case and thank you for helping me out. <laughs> no, great case. Very great case. Helping yeah, you out or making it more painful for you? I don't know which. No, actually, it was very helpful because I think it was very good because I think it was good that I regrassed again. And, you know, I, it, it, I, I really mean it. It was very helpful. So this is, uh, so Saibal does not need an introduction, but uh, uh, he's a close friend and uh, we have been uh, fortunate to have him uh, lead the field of MitroClip. So... Saibal will is you are going to talk about the technical tips and tricks. So as we said, the mitocrib is the only transcatheter treatment option for MR, I think in US as well as in Korea. Am I correct about that? I don't know in Korea whether they have any other technologies. Uh, 130,000 cases. There's continuous improvements of technology. It's effective in both primary and secondary MR. And it's the only device, as Shushi pointed out, to have survival benefit in secondary MR. And case selection and attention to detail, as we saw today, with the help of a lot of people, is actually leads to the success of the procedure, right? It's the same clip, but if you did it in the wrong hands, uh, you can have a bad outcome. So that's why it is important to uh, understand uh, and do the procedure correctly. So this is the Expand G4. And as we saw today, it, you can have uh, two sizes and two widths and independent grippers. So these are my top 10 pearls for the success of a case. And I'm going to go through quickly through this top 10. Case selection is critical. And, and when you say case selection, look at the etiology, the severity, the surgical risk, the morphological criteria, and most important, when to stop and when to avoid a case. And then today was an example of, I think a great thing is when to stop, right? The cases to avoid, orifice areas less than 3.5, Rheumatic MR, calcified leaflets, when you have severe TR, which cannot be treated, recent endocarditis, and congenital clefts with MR are not the greatest cases to do. When it comes to etiology, I don't want to go to the details, but just remember exclusion of rheumatic endocarditis and calcified valves. Vascular access, as you saw today, we don't have any arterial access in the groin. We use ultrasound guidance to obtain venous access. I've seen arteriovenous fistulas. Single venous access, single per close. Some cases, radial artery access, as we did today, because the patient was a uh, very low ejection fraction. And some cases, a right internal jugular venous access. But we do not use both groins. Always choose your imaging specialist. This was my previous colleague, uh, Moody. And uh, we, we grew together and we learned things together. And I think the imaging physician as well as the procedures have equal responsibility and credit or discredit in, during a case. I, I'm sure most of you guys agree with that. The transeptal puncture is critical. As we did today, we did it mid fossa and very posterior to get enough height. So we are very important to get height. It's okay to have five centimeters, but it's not good to be too close to the valve. So as much height as you can get, it's, it's advisable. Left atrial pressure monitoring, as you saw today, I thought it was very helpful. And it told you when to stop and when not to add another clip. Because you saw when the A wave became greater than the E wave, there was no reason for me to continue putting another clip in because we had now received 
if, you, if there was a receiver V wave, I would have probably put a considered a second clip, but there was no evidence of hemodynamics. So I think left continuous left atrial pressure monitoring is is critical. And if there's only one thing that I give an advice to my colleagues and the viewers is to consider left atrial pressure monitoring. And you saw it's not difficult to do two wires, put one wire for four French print tail, and over the other wire, you advance the guide. This is the, just an example of what goes on. And to answer Shushil's point, Shushil saw this case. You saw there is no interaction with the pigtail. It's important, Shushil, that the pigtail is left in the mouth of the pulmonary vein. Don't put it free in the left atrium. Otherwise, it flops around and it can interact. But if you keep it in the pulmonary vein in the mouth, then you don't have that issue of, uh, issue of interacting with the guide. Uh, orientation of the clip, again, we saw this today, that... We saw when we disoriented how things went wrong and it was so critical that we orient. And what is important is the three. You orient above the valve, you orient after before grasping and you orient after grasping. And we saw it today that if you don't orient, you've seen that the clip can go into the valve inside and suddenly turn. And, that, and that's especially a problem with you using XTRs or XT wide clips. Uh, holding the ventilator or reducing the tidal volume during final position and grasping is very helpful because it allows the grip not to drift while you're actually uh, grasping the leaflets. And today we saw a nice example of using multiplanar reconstruction imaging. I think this is really, as Shushil again pointed out very nicely, it has made uh, people who are early users to become easy, uh, to early users to actually adopt this technology much better. And then finally, look, look at leaflet insertion. Today, we spent a lot of time together in this case. And I think the focus was leaflet insertion. If you get a good leaflet insertion, and if you're perpendicular, you will have MR reduction. If you don't get a good leaflet insertion, and then another point which Shishil showed today is when I pulled out the, when I pulled the gripper out, the leaflet fell out. And if the leaflet fell out, it really meant that the leaflet was never in. And if you pull the gripper back and the leaflet doesn't fall, you know you've got enough leaflet inside. So this is just an example of looking at the leaflets and then closing the clip and seeing that there's enough tissue. Uh, one, here's an example where the leaflets are, are a little bit mobile. Remember that we saw it today and then we had, it came off and then we regrassed and we got much better leaflet insertion. Again, we saw this exactly today happening. These are all the things that happen on a daily basis. Uh, this is the advantage of the control gripper actuation. You can see that the posterior leaflet is rolled in and it was not really, but inside. We clockwise and advanced the clip and got a better leaflet insertion. And now you can see the leaflet is resting on the clip. And then we dropped the grippers and then we grasped the leaflets and we got a nice reduction of MR and a much better tissue bridge. So this is an example of using of the control gripper actuation. Finally, when you have a wide MR jet, uh, you should always think of putting, putting a second clip. And the second clip has many advantages. It stabilizes the first clip uh, in addition to actually reducing the MR. Uh, so we have a low threshold to put a second clip. Uh, here's a patient, we did one flail. You can see there's a medial jet and we went ahead and put a second clip and there's actually trace to no MR. And here's an example of the tissue. And finally, I just want to mention one thing. In doing this procedure, to understand when you should stop and when you should continue. Today, remember, we had a lot of argument and discussion about when to stop and when not to stop. And I think you should take into consideration about ACO and hemodynamics. Today, we saw a, an MR reduction significant. We saw the pulmonary vein flow had normalized and the mean gradient was two. And more important is the invasive hemodynamics. The V wave came down less than the A wave. And we didn't have cardiac outputs, but we showed a systemic increase of systemic pressure. All of these together is uh, guides you to when you should continue and when you should stop. So with that, I'd like to conclude by saying, in the procedural tips, case selections is the most important. Attention to detail at each step is essential. Low thresholds to place multiple clips and use both echo and invasive hemodynamics to understand the when you should start and when you should end. And actually, I think if there's any one sentence you want to take from me, it's the last sentence.
Thank you very much. Excellent presentation, Saibal. Great, great job. Uh, maybe we will ask the panel members if they have any questions for both uh, Saibal and Sushil. Uh, Sushil presented the data and Saibal gave very useful uh, tricks to the and step-by-step -step thinking process that how we select the patients and what we do during the procedure. Uh, if you can have the have the view of for the whole panel, we can ask panel members if they have a question for Cyber or Sushil. Can I ask Sushil about uh, GDMT? Uh, if you have ideal patients for the clip, you, it looks perfect for it. How long do you wait for GDMT to work or not work? Well, what is the ballpark figure? So, I mean, I think our, our thresholds are different based on if we think it's an ideal patient for the clip or not. Technically, you know, we we try to optimize. I think one of my concerns, and you know, you know, curious what others think, is you know, MR is a dynamic process. You know, patients can have severe MR. You optimize them. You know, they they may be okay for a period of time, but if these patients are still symptomatic, and you come back and they say this moderate MR then, you know, they go home and they eat a little bit of salt and they're severe MR again. And so, you know, I, there's no set thing, but I, 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 one of my feelings, and I'm curious what Saibal and Samir and others think, is I think we wait too long and we make patients, at least in our institution, sometimes jump through too many hoops. Um, and I think we've pr shown the benefit. If the anatomy is ideal, I have a lower threshold for going earlier. If the anatomy is poor, you know, you have a cleft or calcium or a small mitral valve area, then the conversation's different in my mind. But I'm curious what no, I think. Uh, I think you're right. But what I find is that what is the exact optimization that you're doing, right? If so somebody has a high blood pressure okay. and somebody who has a... That doesn't need to uh, wait that long. ...desynchrony and all those things, then they're different. Somebody who has a poor EF and a blood pressure of 90 or 100 and you're tweaking diuretics, that guy we need to treat early rather than late. But if there is a patient that is the different kind, the affibrillated, uh, you know, person who has an uncontrolled uh, heart rate, high blood pressure, these are the patients I think we can treat with guideline-directed medical therapy better. And they typically improve. And I usually wait for six weeks or eight weeks uh, before deciding to do it if they have some treatable things. No, that's a good point. I mean, I, I think that four to eight weeks, it's just the question is how long do you, do you, do you make, because it's a dynamic thing, right? Sometimes it's severe, then it gets better, then it gets worse. You know, it's, that's the question. Where does it fit in that? Well, you know, there are certain things, pathologies that I know, as Sami said, if I see a patient whose blood pressure is in the 90s and he has a clear-cut restricted posterior leaflet, almost that I wouldn't even consider that a patient to be a prime functional MR. Maybe it is primary MR, right? It's a type of primary MR. I wouldn't wait too long. I just clip it. On the other hand, if a patient has hypertension or a person who has a true dilated cardiomyopathy with a left bundle branch block and white QRS, those are two patients where I definitely want to optimize the medical treatment or do a, a CRTD. And I just did a patient just, just a few months ago and with a white QRS and I optimized him and did a left bundle and I did a CRTD and he actually the MR improved. So these are the two groups of people where I really focus on. So I That's don't even point, use yeah. the word maximally tolerated. I think the right term should be appropriate GDMT. That's it. Is the patient on appropriate GDMT? And you can do it simultaneously. If you know it's not going to improve, you can do it simultaneously. Saibal, can I ask you, uh, it's good to see you again. Good to see you, Michael. Yeah. Yeah. Um, given the a better and better results of uh, the mitral clip procedure and the simplicity transcapital approach. Do you still think we uh, we should still focus on the high risk group of patients, or should we move down to sort of a lower risk patients? And and the other question is, when will you refer your patients to the surgeons? So um, I usually refer the surgeon when it's a failed mitral procedure. <laughs> no, <I'm not> sure. <laughs> so. <laughs> The answer to the first question is definitely uh, the, with uh, the improvement of outcomes, especially with G4, where you can get results and with, uh, with a good case selection, where you know you can get an MR reduction to trace to MR. In an intermediate risk patient, it is not unreasonable to consider a CLIP procedure, even if he's not high risk uh, in, in, in a patient. 
Otherwise, at least in the United States, we have a clinical trial, a clinical trial which is randomizing CLIP versus surgery for intermediate risk DMR patients. And I think it's a very reasonable option. Having said that, there are a couple of anatomies which I think the CLIP is superior to surgery. Number one is anterior prolapse or anterior flail, anterior disease. Anterior disease is not always the best disease treated by surgical or restricted posterior leaflets or a mixed disease like today. I would say some of these are not the best patients. There are some subsets where you can clip is not a bad option for these patients. So, so do you think you will follow the same story of proper procedure moving down to low, even low risk patients? Um, you know, I, I'm not ready for low risk. I'm, I'm ready for intermediate risk, but not low risk. And, you know, Dr. Farachi is sitting behind me, a cardiac surgeon. He, he believes that even if you're 95 years old, you, are, you should have surgery. But um, we, I'm, on the, I'm a business joking. He, he's very rational, and he also believes that there's certain population. He's the one who saw the patient today and thought it was the most appropriate thing to do. But I think... Are treating a younger person like in the 40s with a very nice treatable lesion, I have a little bit of a problem there. Yes, agree. But anterior prolapse, if the surgeon tells me, let's say I see a patient with Barlow's disease, I'm saying now Barlow's, where, and the surgeon says I, I have only a 50 50 chance of repair, I would say, then why don't try a clip? But if he says he's going to write, that but most the of them say 95%. Yeah. So, okay. especially at Cleveland Clinic. <laughs> so the question is that you know there is as you know the CTSN is trying to do the trial with the low risk. Cybel is doing a trial with the intermediate risk. So people are moving towards that. But I think the age is the most important cutoff where most people below sixty five feel very uncomfortable yes. doing CLIP. Uh, yes. So the risk is a there is an anatomical risk. So this green, yellow, and red zone kind of concepts. And there is a surgical risk, which is, surgical risk is low. Remember that all these people that come, the risks are low. But anatomical risk is the one that, like Saibal is saying, anterior leaflet or unrepellable valves can be considered high-risk surgery. Oh, MAC, a patient with mitral valve uh, flail P2s with MAC. MAC, They yeah, have yeah. not the best surgical cases, right? But they yeah, are yeah, actually yeah. not that. They can be done quite effectively by clip. Now, exactly. are you, are you made a comment about the low risk trial at the attempting a CD net. I think that's a ridiculous trial. <laughs> okay. And I, hope hey, you I, I know that. Now, I'll tell you why it's ridiculous. Okay. The control arm, when you do a study, you compare a new arm versus a control arm, correct? And the control arm is the established therapy. If you, the established therapy for mitral valve repair is surgery. So that's the control arm. So the experimental arm becomes the clip because the clip has never been studied or not, at least it's not proven in that therapy, right? So then you, you compare A versus B. A is the experimental arm, B is the control arm. And then you cannot call it, you cannot call, say, I want to do a study where I want to show B is superior to A. Well, B is already superior to A by current definition. You don't do a trial to prove that. If you want to show a superiority design, you have to make, you cannot do a superiority design when it was never even indicated. No one is claiming that mitoclip is superior to surgery in low risk patients. So I, I, think it, but I, I think I, I, we should probably move on from that. But I think the, the, the question and what you've raised and, and others have raised is it's part of the algorithm and it's part of the discussion. In a 75-year-old who's who's low risk, but if the likelihood of repair is 50-50, I think we all agree, you know, take take the chance with the clip. It, it, that's how we practice, would practice as well. Um, and does, But it's that's not the approved indication because you're saying at 75, if I don't clip it and I take away the chance of repair and they get a replacement, not a big deal. And But, it, but it's probably not appropriate to do the same thing in a 45-year-old. Yes, right? Exactly. But I think that's it's part of the algorithm. It goes into discussion with the surgeon. That's important to have those uh, discussions. The one thing I will raise, uh, and I will ask the opinion from the panelists, how many, uh, I'm not sure who's an imager and who's an interventionalist, 
I think depending on volumes, I think, it, and I'm curious what others think, but I think it's important to have dedicated imagers because I, I think this is much an echo procedure as a interventional procedure. Um, and I think that does add a lot, especially in when people are starting out. And, and I think that's an important point, at least from my perspective, that I think needs to be emphasized. I agree that, uh, that the imaging cardiologist is as or the physician is as important as the implanting physician, or if not even more important. Yeah, yeah, I because agree. I cannot agree more. Yeah, I think it is, and it is sometimes impossible to do if your friend is not there. Yes, so right. if, if your imaging person is on vacation, uh, sometimes you feel bad to, you know, you feel really handicapped. Can, can I ask Saibo about a situation where you have severe TR, severe MR and pulmonary hypertension, moderate severe? Do you do try to do both at the same time? Or you do the MR, then you wait a while and then come back again? Or what 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 is the thoughts behind those type of patients? Well, you know, because I'm a part of the triluminate trial, I try to do them uh, separately because I want to put the patients in the study. Uh, I, I don't, but I do agree that at some point of time, it's reasonable to do mitral followed by tricuspid. So provided you don't have severe pulmonary hypertension, but I feel it's it's nice to treat the mitral, diaries the patient, make the tricuspid regards a little bit easier to do, and then do it. That's why I try to do it uh, separately anyway. Uh, but of course, if there are financial constraints because, you know, if, to bring in, if it's an off-label use of tricuspid, you can't do it. But I think the right way to do it is mitral first and then wait and then do practice. I think let Sushil wrap up huh? because we are running out of time. So Sushil, why don't you wrap up the session? Yeah, no, on behalf of myself and Samir, I want to thank uh, everybody, Saibo, for an outstanding case and lecture, the panelists uh, for a great discussion. Uh, there's a lot we need to learn here. And I think there's a lot that each year we'll, we'll learn and move forward uh, uh, with these therapies. and. Uh, and I look and I look forward to hopefully next year, uh, all of us being able to get together in person for this and not do this virtually. Although this was quite fun. Thank you yeah, again. I, and uh, I agree that I think the mitral mitral treatment is artistic and more fun. Yeah. So I think uh, it is more enjoyable, and uh, you know it is uh, it is every day it is excitement. So I yeah. hope we can meet I, together. And for my enjoy. side, I want to thank every every member of the panel who helped out this case. I'll tell the patient this. I mean it. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Take care, thank everyone. you. Thank you. Bye. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.